okay, so the ending is always generally the best thing on Miami. So let's get to it. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Love and Hip Hop Miami season three. This is basically their episode 13, basically is what it is. Listen, it's reunion part one. Now, first of all, where the heck is Nina? I don't know what's going on. I don't know why Mona decided to do this, but we don't have Nina. We got Claudia Jordan, which is cool. It's no problem. Um, did you know Claudia Jordan it can be messy enough to get down to it? Um, I see that they seem to like this whole thing of having Kendall Kendall on the side. Not a fan. I'm not a fan. I mean, they did it. I was happy for Kendall, but I don't really like it. I, I don't really like his whole part, but whatever. You know, it is what it is. So, let's get to these clothes. Um, eh. Trina looked nice. It, it was, it fit Love and Hip Hop Miami. Um, of all of them, I have to say, yeah, Trina. Trina looked good. I, I, the rest of that stuff, I, I couldn't get with. I, I, what Joy had on, I couldn't get with it at all. I was like, what is really going on here? Like, Joy had on a nude body stocking with mirrors glued to it. Um, Amara Lenegra looked like she was really giving you had either Jean Bonnet, Jean Bonnet Ramsey line of pageant girl, baby pageant girl gowns. I was like, wow, these big puffy shoulders and all this all of it, the hair, all of it, it was just wrong. And the shoes, I said, Amara, are you kidding me? Now, I usually scream about what the things that Amara puts on because you know she's built to hell and back. But them shoes, I couldn't mess with them shoes at all. I said, girl, no. No, 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 honey. Them was shoes for her mom. That was Mama Anna's shoes. Those were a little girl's pageant dress. It was terrible. Prima Donna's hair and makeup, very pretty. I live for her hair and her makeup. I, you know, I think she's beautiful. Um, hair and makeup, the dress, I couldn't get with it. It was, and I noticed this about Prima's, her clothing choices are, they're always like a cross between evening and lingerie, but something in the connection is not, it's not meshing. It can be done. It can be done. But whoever she's using, they they it's it's not her, it's the designer. The designer and the person that are constructing these garments, they're not bringing through. I see what she's going for, but it's not coming through. Um her body be snatched though. Oh, her body be snatched. I said, girl, get on down, honey. Um, Kendall Kendall's outfit was cute. He had a, a cute little outfit, and it fit the whole Miami thing. Um, yeah, it wasn't too dressy. It, was, it wasn't dressed way down. It was just kind of cute. Bobby Lights looked cute for Bobby. Bobby was very... Honey, Bobby was giving you Mommy Dear setting. Very much so. And I laughed when um, he came out, and Claudia Jordan looked at him and said, Bitch, stole my outfit. Claudia, don't play yourself. Don't play yourself, sweets. Your outfit, it wasn't a bad suit, but that little suit you had on didn't have nothing for what Bobby had on, honey. Bobby was giving you mommy dearest. But um, Claudia's suit was cool, but it looked like, you know, Miami. It had that, that little... Uh, upscale tacky thing going on. It was it was cool. It was cool, but it wasn't holding a candle to what Bobby had on. Uh, Santana, 
Child, this this whole thing with Santana and Kendall, I didn't like. This this was this was part of that whole Kendall's part of what he does. I didn't like this. I thought this was a very slick way of shading Santana because if they had anybody else say the things about Santana that Kendall said, there would have been, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's LGBTQIA, you trying to be funny, whereas he really was trying to be funny. He was being stereotypically shady to the queen, but the fact that he's a queen too, they thought it was just sweep one up. No, because he doesn't, he doesn't uh, embrace that he's a queen. So he doesn't get the free pass to say the shit to Santana that he was saying either. It was shady and it was unnecessary shade. He was clowning Santana on his eyelashes, his eyeliner, him chewing the gum and just him being extra. He basically just coming for his femininity <laughs> all, all, all together. But no, I wasn't giving Kendall no pass because Kendall doesn't embrace his femininity to the point where it gives him a pass to talk about Santana. You were being shady, Kendall. And it just looks like one shady queen being shady to another queen. And didn't like it. Anyway, moving on. Yeah, I said it. I said what I said. Moving on. Um, Claudia didn't do bad at all in her host. Like I said, Claudia knows how to ask the hard questions. Claudia got a mouth on her. Claudia is going to be fat through this process. Um, and, you know, she won't let them just run over her at, trust me, uh, Madame Jordan will not let them run over her, honey. And um, she did something, we're going to talk about it, that I thought she did a very good job with uh, maneuvering this one piece. She did a real good job. And I don't know that Nina would have been able to do that. I think Claudia did a great job. Anyway, but anyway, let's go over here to... Um, there was a lot about MJ, Shay, and Amara. So we got this thing. So they're not together as a couple, but they're he's still living with her. Shay is saying, listen, you don't want him per se, but you don't want to let him go. He needs to go ahead and man up and move on. Because instead of him playing you, you basically are playing him. And I see it is basically what she's saying. And she's trying to say it in a nice way without really calling her brother out. But her brother's like fighting with her. And I'm like, you're going to keep pushing Shay till she really tells you what's going on. Because the worker of this whole situation, I don't give a damn what they say. MJ, you came into the game to try to play Amar. You tried to work Amara, just like the girl, Annie, was saying. You came and tried to work Amara. Amara's eyes are completely open, and you're not going to get the chance to actually work her. You screwed yourself when you bust out there and tried to ask her about being management. It was so evident at that point of what it was you were trying to do. Getting everybody else away from her, which a lot of them needed to be away from her anyway. But you were push, 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 push. And you were so forceful with it because you, and, and this is my opinion, it was a setup. He wanted to get everybody away from her so he could have her at his own leisure and work her like a part-time job. And somewhere in there, she not that stupid. And you ended up getting worked and looking like a sucker. And your sister sees it and she's trying to really break it up, really break it up before the streets start calling you the sucker that you really are. Anyway. Um, with Shay doing that, she's trying to help him. But it's coming across as very disrespectful, like she's disrespecting him and making him look very desperate, which is the truth. You do look desperate because you're trying to hang on and you need to go somewhere and sit down. Now, in the midst of all of this, Primadonna and Amara are just on extremely bad terms. Bobby, which I don't know why Bobby always does this, Bobby needs to go get him some business. 
he went to say something about prima donna and why she shouldn't have said whatever. And she told, boy, shut up. Shut up. Mind your business and shut up. Any dude need to shut up, Bobby. Stop inserting yourself. And you know who gets very pissed off when Bobby does this? Because Bobby does this a lot. Bobby puts himself in other people's love life business. He, he inserts himself. And the person who it gets on their nerves the worst is Trick. Trick got real pissed off when Bobby started, and Trick actually walked out. He walked out. He rolled out. He's like, I ain't got time for this. He rolled out. And I noticed that, because it's just like Bobby, when Bobby does that little stuff, Trick just, instead of cussing him out and saying the wrong thing that's, you know, in the public, Trick will just walk away, and I've noticed that this season. So, they end up sending MJ out there with Kendall. And then JoJo goes out there. And I just, again, now JoJo's giving me, child, what type of slut are you? That's that's what is, is serving me. Now she's saying that him and her never actually messed around. And he's saying he don't, I, he's like, I'm not a manager. I'm an artist myself. I, I don't want to be your manager. No, you're back, Pat, little pussy papa, because you did want to be your manager. And that's the thing that really through the relationship over the side of the boat, honey. So don't try to BP and PP now. I said, oh, I'm just sick of this mess. I am really sick of it. Anyway, then we bring Julian in. Julian stated that him and Amara never had anything going, that they all need to really stop that. Um, it got, by this time, Trick had come back out. Trina has gotten her thing straightened out. Trina was in the process of grieving real heavy when this season started. Trina is back to Trina now. Trina's ready to talk her shit. And it just wasn't a good time for Julian. And we got to really find out Julian did do some shifty stuff as, as pertains to the signing of Amara. He signed Amara to Trina's label without Trina knowing about it, then did something else with that deal. It was a twist it was uh, some type of really slick twist, but Trick understood it, and Trick snapped all the way out and told him, listen, you've done some shady stuff that concerned me, that concerned other people, but this little stuff you did with Trina, ain't nobody going for it. Ain't nobody going for it. And for real, for real, I'm going to break your jaw as soon as I get a chance. You've been shady. You've been sideways. And I'm going to break your jaw. And nobody could get Trick calmed down until Prima Donna came. Well, she didn't even know that Trick was back out on stage. Prima Donna got out of the beauty chair with pin curl, <laughs> pin curl clips and everything showing. And had to come and get Trick. And remember, she told us at the beginning of the season that her and Trick are very close. And she nobody could get Trick calmed down until Prima Donna came out and he calmed down. Because I think he was going to try to get Julie in that. I said, Lord, have mercy. Then this whole thing with Prima Donna versus Jocelyn. So Jocelyn ain't there. Jocelyn just literally stopped filming like three episodes and she just stopped filming. When I tell you Prima Donna read Jocelyn for filth to an inch of her life, everything, all about her her substance abuse, Stevie J and the fake marriage, her not being a good parent, and on and on and on. I said, girl, you didn't do yourself that favor's not showing up. Prima, they let her talk, and Prima Donna read Jocelyn to complete and utter filth. I was like, oh my gosh. And then gave a big girl speech to her, honey, she, you could never. You could never come for me. She said, and I came in, she said, I just had a baby. And I was going through postpartum when I came on to set, having some issues about my size and stuff. And you try to pull that little thing with that pig and all that. She said, girl, you could never, you could never. Took all the energy, pulled it together. She put a, together a diss track and the song is doing real well. I said, well, that didn't work out real good. And she gave this little speech about the big girl saying, baby, I'm here to, to represent the big girl. And I was like, well, baby, you doing that? Because that Madonna, she's sharp to me. Anyway, so last thing that went on this, this first part. 
was Miss Sukiana. I think Sukiana is the the person who I think has gotten the most out of the experience. Because when we, we first start watching, I was like, oh, she going to get on my nerves. But it turned out that week to week, I was looking for Sukiana and wanting to see what she was doing because she literally was growing as a woman, a young woman, as an artist, and learning to conduct herself in more of a professional and business life. She has gained the most, I think, career-wise and personally of everybody on this show. Of everybody on this show this season. But she um, is still had her little thing where she kind of was in the middle of the whole thing with Tip versus Santana. And Claudia being there, Claudia did an excellent job of actually bringing them together and actually squashing that beef, that Santana and um, Tip were having. And Trick, because Trick was over there and he was able to add something to it as well. And it, it you know, Trick stopped all the hollering. It was all this hollering and screaming. And Trick was like, really y'all? So when he spoke, it was like the father was talking and they just kind of brought it on down. And then this whole thing, Claudia did the shit out of it. Like she really worked that part. Of, I think she did a better job than Nina would. Because Nina, I think, would have shut them down and shut them up and moved the show along. Whereas Claudia Jordan, she started talking about the fact that she has, you know, trans folk in her life as a part of her life. So I think what she had to say came across where they were respectful of what she was saying. She knows what she's talking about. She knows the struggle and that kind of thing. So nobody was kind of blowing her off and they were listening. And her and Trick, back and forth, it was like a mother and father talking to some kids and they really squashed it right in front of us. I was like, now y'all did that. That was like excellent. Then I said that was the last thing. That wasn't the last thing, child. The last thing was when Trina snapped out, baby. Trina snapped all the way out on Nikki. Oh, she snapped out on Nikki. The one that was dating uh, Trick in the beginning. She come in with that old disrespectful stuff. Honey, again, I told you, Trina's done grieving. Snapped all the way out and told her, you could never... Let me explain to you again who I am in case you either forgotten or you missed it. The memo didn't get to you. This is who I am. This is who you want to be. You're nobody. And she just read her down. And they removed her. And it, it was a mess. And she was carrying on. And Trina got to snap in. And when it all was said and done, Trina took her whole family. Her whole family. And exited stage left. And then they took uh, Nikki back there to talk to Kendall. Honey, Trina was back there banging on the door like, uh, let me get in there and whoop her up right quick. I said, oh, gosh. Yeah, that Trina was on one, honey. I said, oh, my. It was interesting. And <laughs> Kendall was like, no, don't let, <laughs> don't let Trina in here. <laughs> so just a mess. So it was interesting. And this was just part one. Part one, it was so much going on, but the one thing that I hated the most about this whole part was Amara's shoes. I'm done.